This lesson is on rational functions, uh, and specifically the asymptotes of rational functions. So you've seen, you're familiar with quite a few different functions. Let's just take one of the functions that you're familiar with, which would be a quadratic function. And you know that when you look for a quadratic function, for the graph of the quadratic function, the key point is the vertex. So the rational function, it also has its key points that we look for. We take a look at a rational function. The key thing that we look for is actually not a key point, it's a key element of the rational function, and that is the asymptote. Now the asymptote is a line that you should have seen in uh, intermediate algebra in connection with the hyperbola. And it is a line that is approached um, and it can, and some students think that it can't be crossed, but it can actually be crossed. But uh, the defining feature is that it is eventually approached. So each of these asymptotes here are going to be approached by the graph of the function. Now I could, I could have an asymptote that is crossed like this. Okay, so here's an asymptote, and let's see that it is going to be crossed. It's going to be crossed, but then the graph of the function is going to come back down and eventually approach the asymptote. So it's so right here it is crossed. Um, so the asymptote is it's not that it can't be crossed, it's that it is going to eventually be approached. Now this is a rare case where it is crossed, but you do need to be aware of that because that that uh, certainly can come up. I think a case that is more likely for you to see would be a case where the asymptote, you've got a rational function that looks like this, and say I've got an asymptote here and an asymptote here, and I'm also going to have an asymptote at the x-axis, so I'll do that in red so that you can see it better. So there's an asymptote at the x-axis, and then in a case like this, this rational function approaches these asymptotes over here, and it approaches these asymptotes over here, and then in the center, it approaches vertically. Now it's going to cross the horizontal asymptote and then approach vertically. So just be careful about thinking that an asymptote can't be crossed. So that's what an asymptote is, it's the, it's, uh, or one thing that we use it for is that it's the defining feature of a rational function. So let's look at uh, finding the asymptotes of rational functions. So first of all, here are a couple of rational functions, and what makes them rational is that uh, they have a variable in the denominator. Um, I could have a rational function that does not have a variable in the numerator. For instance, the second one over here, if I just had 4 over x squared plus 1, that would be a rational function. And what makes it rational is that it has a variable in the denominator. But we're going to leave it as 4x. Now we're going to look for the asymptotes. Now you'll notice back here that we had vertical and horizontal asymptotes. There, the asymptotes do not have to be vertical or horizontal, but that's all we're going to look at uh, for right now. So looking at... Uh, the first one here, f of x equals 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. What I want to do is I want to find the uh, vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote, I will abbreviate AS for asymptote. The vertical asymptote is found in the denominator. Um, probably... It might be good for me to, to say right now that it's common to refer to the numerator of a rational function as n of x and to refer to the denominator as d of x. I may be using that later on. But back to the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is found in the denominator, and all I do is I take the denominator and... I set it equal to 0, and I solve for x, and that gives me my vertical asymptote. Uh, for this other function over here, 
I'll look for the vertical asymptote here and I set the x squared plus 1 equal to 0 and then I have x squared equals negative 1 and you can see that this is headed towards uh, an imaginary number plus or minus rad negative 1 so this actually does not have a vertical asymptote this uh, function on the right here 4x over x squared plus 1 and that's alright so we'll move on and look at the horizontal asymptote and let's look at some rules for that the rules for finding a horizontal asymptote and I'm going to use this nx dx uh, that I n of, uh, n of x d of x that I said I might use so if the numerator um, and when I say n of x I should say degree so the degree the degree of n of x is less than the degree of d of x. So if the degree of the numerator, the power, the highest power on the numerator, is less than the highest power on the denominator, then there is a horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then there is a horizontal asymptote at the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So if you have trouble following that notation and that description, and it'll be very clear when we look back here at these two functions and say that I'm going to find, I'm going to look for the horizontal asymptote of this first one and the degree of the numerator is 1 so that's 2x to the first and the degree of the denominator is 1 that's x to the first so what's the leading coefficient of the numerator it's 2 and what's the leading coefficient of the denominator it is 1 so I've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 over 1 or 2 for the second one over here when I look for its horizontal asymptote, the degree of the numerator is uh, 1, and the degree of the denominator is 2. So recall back here that if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So that's the case for this one. The degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, so a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And that's pretty much it for vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. There's one other special case that I want to take a look at. So something that we have to do before we find the asymptotes is factor the numerator and the denominator. Because if I've got a match of factors, then that is going to affect my asymptotes. So I have a matching factor of x minus 3 and x minus 3. So let's look at how that affects my asymptotes. I'll first go, like I'm going to find the vertical asymptote like I did before. So I go vertical asymptote and I said set the uh, denominator equal to 0. And when I do that, I get x equals 2 or x equals 3 based upon this factoring up here. So I want to say that my vertical asymptotes are x equals 2 and x equals 3, but this is a special case because of this match here, they're actually, this is actually not an asymptote. All right, and we're going to, you'll see this when we graph the functions. This actually results not in an asymptote but in a hole in the function and you'll understand that more all you need to know now is if they match if you have matching factors and you think you have a asymptote from a factor in the denominator you actually don't okay so we only have one vertical asymptote here and then for the horizontal asymptote you can see that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator so we've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero and that is all you need to know for right now. Next will come graphing.